In this video, you are going to learn how to implement jump buffering, coil time and cancelled jump in your Godot platformer game. What is necessary in good platformers often is lacking in beginner developers' games. But what are the three things that can massively improve your movement feel in your game? Hey there! I'm John and in this tutorial series we'll cover how to implement Kaya time. Before falling you'll levitate for some time, just like in cartoons. Jump buffer. If you press the jump right before landing, you jump again and cancel jump. The longer you hold the jump key, the higher you go. So, without further ado, let's dive straight into making them. Before we start working, I need to introduce you the original system. So, we have the variable velocity, it's used for all the movement, and after all the movement has been calculated here, then we call the move and slide velocity. Next, jump impulse is a positive number, but when the player jumps, the speed is set to minus jump impulse. Because in Gozo, up is negative and down is positive. Vertical velocity is limited and it's ranging from minus jump impulse to positive jump impulse and the gravity is applied only when the player is not on the ground. So, let's add the first thing, the jump buffer. I suppose it's the easiest thing to implement here. So, add timer, rename it to jump buffer timer, set it to one shot and tweak with the wait time, I usually set it to 1.2. Now. Add a reference to it, start the timer when the jump button is pressed. Instead of checking if the player is on floor and the jump button is pressed, check whether the jump timer is not yet stopped. And in the jump method, stop the timer. This thing is a lifesaver, because sometimes it feels like you have pressed the button right before landing, but you still didn't jump. And this feature solves the problem. Now, the next in our list is coil time. Add the timer again, rename it to coil timer, set it to one shot and tweak the values. I usually prefer 0.1, but for visibility I'll set it on one second for now. Add a reference, start this timer when the player is on floor and stop it when the jump is done. Change the code so the gravity is applied only when the player is not on floor and the quiet timer is stopped. And in order to allow the player to jump during this quiet time, add the elif statement that basically says if the player is not on floor but the coil timer is still on, then if we also request jump, then jump. And that's already it. As you can see, it's quite ridiculous how far he can this little fox can go, but as I said, it's just for visibility. And as you can see, I'm running here, I'm jumping and I'm falling. So, it will not cause any problems. And the next thing on our list is cancel jump. I remind you, the longer you press the key, the higher you go. Probably it's the most mind trickiest thing in this video, but it's implemented in just two lines of code. And here we go. Now, the code checks if the jump button was released before 
the velocity reached half of the jump impulse. In other words, it did not came all the way from 200 to 100, because jump impulse is 200. This value here is actually just the value I like. You may create another variable that contains the minimum jump impulse, but you get the idea. And so, if you release the jump button before we've got to half of the speed, we set the jump speed to that. And now let's check it. One, two, three. Three different heights of jump. If the jump was higher, or if I changed the minimum value, you could see more variations of jumps, like five different heights or six different heights. It just depends, but you still get the idea that it works based on how long you press the key. That's it. And so, in this video, we have added a few things that massively improve your movement in platformers. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. And if you did, like, share and subscribe. See you next time.